Good morning, and welcome to the Shack and First Monday Morning Minute. Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Shackin, and welcome to this Monday Morning Minute. I'm here with Dr. Rafi Kazanjian, one of our AEGD residents here in Buffalo. Uh, Rafi, good morning. Good morning, Dr. Shackin. It's Happy great. to be here. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Rafi, you know, we've had this program going now for several years, and you're one of the three residents we have this year, and we're so happy to have you in our program. Thank you. It's been a tremendous opportunity. We've done a lot of good dentistry here and provided a tremendous service to the patients here and learned a whole lot. Tell us about the case that you're going to be presenting. Sure. I chose this case uh, to present at the advanced course. I think uh, it's a case that I did that covers a vi wide variety of the disciplines here between uh, periodontics, oral surgery, prosthodontics, it really covers all the bases. Um, it was a complicated case, uh, an upper roundhouse with implants and extractions. And um, thanks to the guidance uh, from you and Dr. Powers and Dr. Tambor, um, it went really well. It provided a lot of challenges that I learned from, a lot of the difficulties that um, I think is quite common when you're doing full mouth cases. And um, I think it was an awesome learning opportunity. Rafi, tell me, how many uh, mini implants do you think you've placed in the four or five months you've been here? Definitely. Uh, we passed the 120 implant mark, uh, and we're looking to place a whole lot more. Uh, we've done a lot of those big full mouth cases, uh, which has been a tremendous opportunity. When you were in dental school, did you ever think you'd be doing these kind of cases? You know, no, it's been a big jump. Uh, we've done a lot of learning. Uh, even the technology we've been exposed to here, uh, the CBCT, we've, we've been reading those and um, all kinds of different tools and technologies here that we didn't have any exposure to in dental school, so it's been great. Well, you're almost halfway through the first, the, the one-year program, and we are very excited for the second half of, the, of your program, and we know that you're gonna be a fantastic dentist when you finish. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you guys for all the help and guidance. It's been an awesome opportunity. Thank Thanks you. for being here with us, and thank you for being here with us on the Monday Morning Minute. We'll see you next week. So, Here's an example of one of the cases that we've been working on, that I've worked on since I've been here. Uh, it's a complex case, an upper roundhouse case, and uh, full of all kinds of uh, issues, problems, and uh, difficulties to think about. So I think it's been, it's something that I've learned from a whole lot. And uh, so that's why I wanna share it with you guys. I think it has some good concepts to think about when you're doing these full arch implant cases. So we have a 43-year-old male patient. He wants fixed teeth. Um, when he comes in, his maxillary teeth, they're pretty much all carious, fractured, infected. Um, and this is a case I kind of picked up halfway through from one of the other residents from last year. So um, they saw him originally. Uh, he had his maxillary teeth extracted and he had mini implants placed and he had a denture delivered there. So. Uh, his chief concern when he sees me for the first time, he's ready for his fixed teeth. He wants to get started on that. Oral hygiene, not good. So we can see the medical history next. He's got hypertension, epilepsy, convulsion, but it's well controlled. He says that he doesn't take his medication anymore and he hasn't had a seizure in many years. Um, and he's a smoker, a long time smoker, which we can see has definitely contributed to his oral health. He says he's switched to vaping see if that helps. Uh, his uh, clinical exam, extra oral, everything pretty good shape. Lower teeth, uh, so I, all his upper teeth are extracted, but his lower teeth, again, fair prognosis. There's a lot of restorations there. Uh, there's a lot of crowding, malocclusion, and uh, so it's all stuff to consider there. Here's how he showed up to us originally. Uh, these are the top teeth that I was talking about. Lots of heavy restorations. Uh, over the years, uh, lots of infections, radiolucencies here. And uh, this also makes it challenging for when you're placing any immediates. Um, when you're curetting here and trying to find good bone, uh, it's quite difficult to do uh, on an immediate case. But when we, so we tried, we found four uh, spots for mini implants on that day. and. Uh, all and three of them survived there. So when he showed up to me, this is the scan that I took. So he's got three minis hanging there for his denture and uh, he's got that lower dentition. You know, we went through uh, scalings and uh, some restorations, trying to do everything we can to uh, keep those bottom teeth in good shape uh, for now. His plan, some sort of fixed restoration on the top. We're gonna need more implants there. 
uh, the fixed fix on all, uh, six or, and the uh, cemented roundhouse is the two options uh, that we have here for them. If we do choose the fix on six with the housings, uh, we have to think about the line of draw, the space for the housings. When we're looking f in a tight space for the amount of bone there, we have to consider how much uh, space between the implants themselves. The angle of those implants, prosthetically, are we going to have room for the, uh, that intaglio surface uh, for the housings to be on there? Something to consider. The midline for the denture, uh, he will show you next. He has some problems with that that we'll talk about. Um, he's the bone quality, especially in the uh, maxillary posterior, we're going to look at that. His posterior occlusion in general and his plans for the lower posterior. Uh, you saw on his CBCT, there's just premolars on the bottom there. Uh, so we educate the patient, discuss the options with him. Should we put molars? You know, we kind of have to consider his prognosis for those lower teeth. Uh, like I said, we're trying our best to uh, do what we can to keep them in good shape, but it's up to the patient to, to uh, what he does at home, the hygiene and stuff like that. So let's take a look. We're going to start with the denture. Another one of the excellent aspects of this residency is that we have our lab across the street, and it's been a great help uh, working with Jim and the uh, Shack and First team over there. Um, just tremendous learning experience there. Once you what we've realized is that once the uh, implant part gets figured out, once you get more comfortable with the implants, the real difficult part becomes the uh, prosthetic. So picking these dentures up correctly, making sure your impressions, your bites are done correctly. Uh, there's a whole lot of nuances and challenges there. So for example, on this, this denture pickup, you can see that if you look at just the teeth, his, uh, the lower teeth, first of all, we talked about his malocclusion, his crowding. There's different shades. This uh, midline is not right, and the teeth are rotated and lingual. So uh, it looks like when this denture was picked up, uh, if you look at just the teeth, it looks okay maybe. You know, it is lining up with something. Uh, there's some straight line there. But then if you look at the bigger picture there, you can see that he has a pretty significant midline shift. Um, and so that's something to consider for the final prosthesis or when you add implants and maybe re-pick up this denture. Uh, where are you going to look? How are you going to mark it uh, to make sure you have the midline this time? Uh, you can't just look at the teeth on the bottom and what's going on there. So we're going to make our stent. We sent this for fabrication uh, to shack him first. They have our stent for the implants that we're going to add. You see the holes where the implants uh, that we already have are going to be. And so we add these. And so talking about the fix on six option, some of these implants, uh, we're, f we're drilling just where the bone is. You know, we're trying to find, we're still in a place where he has a very thin ridge, thin bone, and uh, not a lot of space to uh, maneuver. So uh, some of these implants, the angulation uh, is, is difficult for a fix on six, the proximity, you know, maybe these two right next to each other for the, in the uh, six, seven, seven, eight position. Um, it, ta it takes some significant uh, changes for the lab work. Uh, so maybe that's why we thought a cemented option for the roundhouse would be better for this. Another good aspect of the, uh, having the lab across the street, while the patient was in the chair, we uh, placed those implants, had him wait for a little bit. And we took an impression, our PVS impression, right there, that's his denture. And we took the bite, recorded the bite, sent that to the lab for them to mount it. And we got to wait a little bit. Um, and the patient was fine with that. He's comfortable in the chair. Uh, and so the lab mounted that. That saves us a wax rim step. Uh, so the next time the patient comes in, we can do immediately the try-in for the upper roundhouse. Um, so saves us an appointment, saves the patient an extra visit there. That's our Regisil on the bottom recording the bite uh, with his premolars and his, his own denture with the PVS material inside. Um, this is an example of uh, how another way to pick up the denture in these temporary situations. So we're going to send him home with his same denture and uh, those same housing problems, the pickup problems, uh, they could be a factor again if we try to re-pick up his denture. So this is an example. This is not the same denture. This is someone else's lower denture, but the similar concept. Uh, while he waits a few weeks for the try-in and for the final delivery, we just picked up, we hollowed out the inside of the denture and picked it up with Regisil. So this goes right onto the implants. 
um, and it's a secure, stable fit for something that's going to last them, you know, two weeks until the try-in, or and then until the uh, permanent. Um, so that's an important factor to think about uh, for what we're going to send the patient home in. Uh, here's our post-op CT. So we added, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine implants in there now. And you have my, you see my vertical marker there uh, on the left posterior. Um, I put that there on purpose as an example of to show you the bone that we're working with. So right behind that implant, uh, if we want to put something else, there's absolutely nothing there. Uh, posteriorly on both sides, there's really no more room there for another implant to be placed. And so here's our try-in. Uh, here's our um, stone model from the lab. And uh, here's our f up to the first molar roundhouse try-in. And so here's how it looks on the this view I think is important when you're uh, looking at this so if we're going to have the molar there we have that cantilever and uh, not all of the implants cover as posteriorly as we want so uh, in terms of educating the patient talking to him we can do you know a molar on the bottom then we'd have molar uh, MDI supported molars uh, hitting that cantilever so is that going to be a problem uh, maybe one day his eventually the prognosis of his lower teeth uh, it's not good and maybe he does a roundhouse on the bottom too. That would be ideal. So then when we're planning the implant positions for the bottom, it's another thing to consider there. Um, and so I think this view is very valuable, very helpful to see what the kind of occlusion we're dealing with there. Here's our example. I think the midline you'll notice, um, different definitely uh, shifted back over to the left where it should be. Here's our side views of that cantilever. Basically, we're going to have that one molar hanging for the time being. Um, moving forward, we'll determine what he plans to do for the bottom, and we can make the best decision with the patient and with us on what we think we can do for that. Here's our try-in. Looks like the midline is in good shape now. And then here's our final results. So we have that cemented roundhouse. Um, we. Uh, begged the patient not to do a bleach shade because uh, it tends to be very bright. I told him he really wanted a bleach. He said as bright as possible. So I said, okay, we can try bleach four. And, uh, and then he called me during the week and he said, you know, I'm, I've been Googling it. He literally has like the shade guide up on his Google search. And he's like, I think we should do bleach three. And, you know, he's happy with it, but it is very white and very bright and something should be done about the bottoms eventually too. But that's it. That's my case. I think it's a whole lot to talk about there. Hi, this is Fitz. Just wanted to remind everyone to sign up for our introductory mini dental implant course Friday and Saturday, February 4th and 5th. You can save $200 if you sign up before January 31st. Don't delay. The course is filling up fast. Visit us online at shackinfirst.com or call us at one 888 for Shacken, and let's make 2022 your very best year ever by learning how to place mini dental implants. And visit us at the Yankee Dental Congress in Boston, January 27th through the 29th, booth number 1819, and hear Dr. Shacken's free mini dental implant lectures daily at 1.30.